in the deeper area. Um, I'll just keep going. Um, <laughs> in the, you know, the deeper areas, but it's all, we hoped we take over where the divers leave off basically. So um, we're trying to collect that deeper water information. Although as a diver and someone who spends time along the entire coast, I've watched the kelp disappear and really appreciate um, what Lyle had to say about what's happened to our kelp forests. And one of my personal questions and, and for Mari as well is, as we saw the kelp forest kind of you know, disappear, especially along the north, north coast. We lost our primary keystone predator, the, the sunflowers, the pygnopodia. Um, how is that impacting uh, the deeper water fish and all of the fish communities? Um, in 2015-14 in the Channel Islands, we saw 300% increases in fish populations inside and outside of MPAs. Um, in, in 1920, uh, we're not seeing, you know, we're still, we're still analyzing that data, but we're not seeing the same kind of recovery. And, um, you know, there's probably a lot of different reasons why, but I think understanding the impact on that, the, the loss of kelp and the loss of sea stars um, and the proliferation of urchins and the loss of abalone and all of that has had on the entire ecosystem is really important. Um, and Mari also has an education program that we're hoping to expand and include some of this important work around MPAs. We have an incredible database of imagery, video, photos. Uh, we're working with um, high school students and doing a whole education program. And we'd like to expand that to include more information about MPAs. People are not, they're not gonna care about these things or understand them if they don't know what they are. I love. Um... Can, I, can I just interject really quickly? I, I really appreciate Natasha all of the information that you're sharing on what Mari is doing, um, but I'm hoping that you can tie it back to one of our overarching questions, um, or provide us a link or something where people can go and find out some more information on hand. So, is is there a way? Um, that you have a priority that you would like to see information, um, noting that all of those technical monitoring reports are going to be wrapped up into the decadal management review report. Do you have, do you have something else that you'd like to share or, or would you like to tie this back into what you would like to see in the report? Um, I know that you know we're, we're part of providing that information and I just wanted to really share what we've been doing and what we found. So that's it. I'm, I'm happy to put it in you know, our website in the chat if you wanna know more. That, that would be really helpful for the group. Um, and just to highlight um, to everyone that these long-term monitoring reports um, from scientific partners are going to help inform the decadal management review. Um, so all of that lovely information that Natasha was referencing, um, is finalized in a report. So um, that information is available moving forward through the DMR process. So thank you, Natasha. Thank you. Great, I think uh, we can move on to Shanti's question and then probably move to the second question. Yeah, and before, real quick, um, Avery, there was someone in the chat that was trying to get in the queue as well. Um, I'm having trouble finding the chat now. So, oh, okay. you... I, so I can't see the chat because I'm screen sharing right now. Okay. But, um... There it is. Let me just find or whoever was trying to uh, get in the queue, you can just speak up and let us know your name so we can make oh, sure we okay. don't forget you. Can you hear me then? This is Sandra Kearney. Hi, Sandra. Yeah. We, Hi. How about you can you can be after Brandy. How does that sound? Okay, that sounds. Thanks. Great. So go ahead, Shanti. Hi, I'm Shanti Bishop. I am a resident of Mendocino and a lover of the Mendocino Headland State Park and uh, Big River uh, MPA. And I just want to. Um, I pretty much reiterate what Robert said, and also note that in your notes, you wrote uh, swiper and elephant seals instead of harbor seals. 
Thanks. Um, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going back too far. It's not where Robert Jam Goshen was speaking, where it says elephant seal. Anyways, um, I just want to say in terms of um, what needs to happen in our, specifically in our um, Big River MPA is, in my opinion, um, we, we don't have enough, uh, especially uh, department, we don't have enough fish and game officers here on the coast. It's ridiculous. I don't know, on every, any given day, there's maybe one for the entire coast. So um, I feel like until we get that problem resolved, I don't know how we can have um, better document, better, I don't know how we can have better documentation or patrolling or enforcement if we don't have the, the people power to begin with. Um, and I guess just specifically, um, I don't know if this is the right area for to ask this question, but just like as in our MPA, just I feel like sometimes there's lack of clarity as to, um, and I know they just had a meeting with uh, parks and different factions of enforcement, but, um, and perhaps it is written in code, but just, it seems to be like there is often uh, people, we were unclear about um, certain regulations as they apply to the MPA specifically. Shall I give a for example? Now that, like as Robert said, we have so many more visitors. Now it seems this summer we are having more events on the beach, which happen to be in our MPA. Um, so an example would be, can a wedding happening in an MPA is kind of strange anyways, but then are they allowed to have um, uh, amplified music? Just Shanti? Like, yes. So I really appreciate that you have a lot of very specific questions about okay. MPA in your backyard. However, um, if you would like to talk about this with the department staff, since it's so specific, okay. Okay. you can no. reach out for sure. Okay. Um, but we're trying to get it like these overarching. Oh, okay, but uh, I th I'm just giving this as an example of things that affect the MPA that um, are all in their own right very small. But when they're impacting it on a regular basis, it's just like it's just clarification on what what is allowed and what is not allowed. And that's just a small example. So that, that is goes back, that goes back you. to patrolling and enforcement and all that stuff. So great. So what, we, what I'm hearing loud and clear from everybody on the North Coast and believe me, I understand we're a little bit remote and staffing for especially law enforcement can run a little thin. But what I'm hearing is that specific discussion in the DMR that says, hey, we still have questions about the MPAs in our backyard. Um, and we still have questions about the level of enforcement and who's enforcing it. So, and so we need to understand that and continue on outreach to help that so that people who are coming in might have a better understanding of how their actions might be impacting MPAs in our backyard. So some sort of discussion that contemplates additional outreach and the continued need for enforcement. Does that kind of get to the generalized does, but, issue? It does, but lastly, I don't wanna take up any more time, but I just want to reiterate, I just feel like when there is an overall feeling that there's a lack of enforcement and a lack of um, available, uh, you know, of the uh, proper entities to do the enforcement, then people kind of know that. And the people that want to not do the right thing say, you know, like if I'm in a call to get a fish and game officer and they're three hours away, it's like, why I, I basically, if I see what I, what I perceive to be a violation in the MPA, I say to myself, like, how egregious is this? Because most likely they're not going to be able to, you know, show up for it. So I just feel like my bottom line is we, we need people <laughs> and without people to enforce, educate, oversee, 
I feel like we're just, we spin wheels. We, we have these meetings and we talk and talk and talk, and we can say all these things that would be wonderful and surveys and all this stuff to protect it. But if there's no enforcement or no sense of that something's being, being protected and overseen on a regular basis, it's, it just becomes kind of dis, it just becomes hard to have uh, buy. I mean, I have buy into it because I love it and I'm passionate about it, but I just think people, you know, see that and it becomes kind of the screen. Yeah, so yeah thank you. Us. Yeah, thank you so much for your input and definitely have captured here in the notes and also in, in Mike and Elizabeth's ears, the need for more enforcement to include that in the report. Um, okay, so Mike and Elizabeth, are we feeling like we wanna to move to the next question now? Um, this question of how do you define measure and or assess progress towards the goals or continue in this question? Yeah, I think I wanted to just make sure we check in with the people who've been in the queue. Cool. If, if they have some additional uh, input that they want to, that's different than the, the other people have shared, I, I'm not going to prevent, I don't want to prevent them from answering that first question. But if, if, if uh, I don't know, how, 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 what do you think, Elizabeth? Oh, you're muted. Yeah. Oh, you're still muted. Can I just chime in just quickly? I, I, I won't take much time. I, yeah, I, go ahead, Sandra. I completely echo what um, Rob was saying, and I'm certainly on the same page with Shanti. I'm a resident here of Mendocino. I'm in on uh, around Big River daily. Um, I'm also part of the MPA Watch. And um, I want to all point out again, as Rob did, that an app would be great. We'd be, we could get a lot more people involved if we had some, a uh, little more simplicity to it. And um, one thing I would like to have on the data that you're collecting, there's no, no place to put anything about the wildlife on the, the monitoring that we, we do and, and submit. So I would like to see that included. Um, and I think pretty much they've, I, oh, the other thing, Morgan, who was on earlier, mentioned something, and I think it would be a great idea for all, we are, as Rob said, we are hugely, hugely impacted by uh, visitors and um, lots and lots of Airbnbs. And I do think it would be a great idea to have some sort of information, educational information, signage in our stores, because we have like 10, the same stores, and if they get this information in town and at the places they're staying, be it B&Bs or Airbnbs, maybe they would be more cognizant when they step on our beaches. Um, you know, I think that's a I think that's a great suggestion, yeah. and I and I I think uh, myself and Elizabeth, being the North Coast representatives for CDFW, we we welcome engaging with you again on some of those local issues. Um, and you know, I've I've spoken with Robert quite a bit about some of those issues in the past, and let's let's keep that conversation going. Um, but just in the in the for time, let's um, let's try to move through these next questions. And um, just real quick, give Brandy a chance to to hop in too, if if you would like. Uh, thank you, Michael. I'm Brandy Easter, Humboldt County. I was a stakeholder in the North Coast. Um, MLPA process. Hello, Robert. Um, I just, I wanted to concur with a lot of the comments we're talking about with the kelp, the enforcement. Um, the app is a really good idea. And maybe if the idea wasn't already there for um, also using that as a way to let people know that people are fishing in the MPAs. Um, the, SM, the 10 mile SMR is our first backbone. It has nine of the 10 replicate habitats in it. And people have been seeing um, people fishing in it, but they just don't know where to report that. So anyway, I do echo a lot of the things that have been said, so I'll save the time for other questions. Thank you. Yeah, and some of these other, some of these themes may come up in the other questions as well. So um, I don't want to, you know, prevent people from from telling us what what they what you want to tell us so but let's do move on to the next question and um see if we can get some insight into that um yeah so the next question is how do you define measure and or assess progress towards the marine life protection act goals and mike or elizabeth could you just quickly speak to what those goals are just like generally 
So the MLPA, the Marine Life Protection Act, has six goals that it was created basically to help um, ecosystem functions uh, provide opportunities for research, education in areas subject to minimal human disturbance. So there's these six overarching um, goals. And then when each MPA was created, they were created with specific goals and objectives in mind. So if you're not familiar with those six goals, they're available um, to look online. I'll spare you reading them all right now, unless you want me to. <laughs> um, yeah, but for those of you that do know, um, how would you assess the, the, I'm sorry, I don't, okay. How would you measure or define um, our portion of the network or the network in general in um, meeting those goals? Yeah, and Chris from NRDC would welcome you to unmute and share. Hi everyone, so I'm Chris Clark. Uh, I work at NRDC um, based in the San Francisco office, but similar to somebody else on the call, not sure where I fit in, so decided to join the North Coast group. Um, and something that I've been thinking about is the, the portion about education when it pertains to the MPA network and how in two sort of ways. A, is there enough outreach going on as many people have stated and maybe like a survey to kind of analyze and assess the amount of engagement and knowledge thoughts about MPAs by the public and are they aware of the benefits to them as Californians and not just um, biodiversity benefits. But then on the flip side of that, with the MLPA review going on, California kind of has a pretty big opportunity on a national and global scale to lead in ocean conservation. And so how are we, or how is CDFW and OPC, how are they making sure that there are materials and outreach to other municipalities or governments showing how to do effective ocean conservation um, in top-down and bottom-up ways. And so just thinking about a tool for educating others and also educating citizens about ocean conservation is something that I think should be taken into consideration. So oh, thank you. I just really briefly want to tell everybody since this um, localized education has kind of been brought up a lot in our discussion today, that a lot of our outreach and education efforts are done in partnership. Um, so it sounds like we can do a better job of more clearly highlighting those specific partnerships and materials in the report. And then also to highlight that we one of those main partnerships is through the MPA collaborative network. And those are regional, um, county by county. So if you have questions about those, you can follow up um, now if the group is interested or with us personally or through our web page. Um, and that might help if you want to get a, an initial understanding of, of outreach. But um, I appreciate those comments and um, Chris. And so it, it sounds like that's an ongoing theme that will definitely be able to be addressed. Um, thank you. So we can hear from Morgan Wren. Hi there. Um, just to follow up a bit with the education, I, I think the important thing with showing progress towards goals is just being able to track metrics and publish those out to the public. So, I mean, I hear a lot of concern about enforcement. So, you know, what are, what's the like average response time? What is the number of like reports that are, are fully investigated, what, you know, things like that. Um, I'm a volunteer with Reef Check, so we have data on, you know, <laughs> on over time, what our invert fish kelp population is doing in MPAs on the North Coast. Uh, some way to just publish out those trends, like look, dig into the data, look at the trend lines over time and help inform the public on how MPAs are, are comparing to non-MPA zones that we survey. Um, and why like MPAs are important and act as like these seed banks for life to areas outside of the MPAs and why they're important to protect. But I think understanding like what metrics can prove that you're reaching your goals and, and finding a way to get those into the public's hands is important. 
Great. Thanks for that, Morgan. I, I see Shanti's hand, but I'm not seeing everybody. So was there, was there anybody else's before that? Okay, go ahead, Shanti. Possibly Shanti's hand has been up since the last question. So okay. I'm gonna respectfully lower your hand with my powers. <laughs> respectfully. Yeah, I, I didn't raise my hand. I think okay. that's the last question. And I just want to point out everyone that Brandy was able to quickly copy and paste all the six goals of the MLPA into the chat. So I just sent them to the group. So thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Brandy. So is there okay. another metric that or way that you would define success in looking at the MPA network? I, I think that um, from what I heard from Morgan, you know, measurable questions are always great to have. Is there something else that you would find before we move on in our last five minutes that would help address this question? Just want to make sure. Great, then I think the, ne the next question, I think our group is gonna have some awesome input here because I've already been hearing some of it. Um, what role would you like your community to play in the MPA management program moving forward? Lyle, go ahead. You're on mute, Lyle. Thanks. There we go. So I don't want to sound like a vigilante. And I know that uh, my wife, my wife's often chided me about, uh, you know, being careful not to come across as that person, you know, that's like carrying a assault rifle around, you know, which I'm far from. But I think with the amount of comments about enforcement, I mean, I do think that without enforcement, it's really hard to have um rules but also you know you have a lot of concerned citizens and so maybe part of the education is like you know on that flyer like one sentence two sentences what to do if you know what to do if you if you see poaching you know take a picture get a license plate um and you know i mean there are very clear rules about citizens arrest in california and you can do it for a misdemeanor in a public place at any time of day, if it's in a public place, um, if, if it's a misdemeanor or a felony, you know, you can like try to stop someone in the act of doing what they're doing, you know, and whether that is like taking their fishing equipment or something like that, you know, like I think that, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of education might go a long way. And like, and that just like empowering people to just stand up for their own backyards. I mean, I, I mean, if it, if it was in my backyard, I, I would certainly, you know, if I had an MPA in my backyard, I would certainly not hesitate to, you know, try to, um, you know, use a reasonable amount of, uh, of uh, force to, to stop them from doing what they're doing if they were just, you know, can try to continue, I don't know. <laughs> I know it's, it's like dangerous territory. <laughs> Well, I, I have kind of a follow up to that. And um, for those of you who had specific comments about Big River um, and your other areas, what enforcement agency do you see there the most? And then for the app, would it actually function? I know there's dead spots here up in Humboldt. Are there dead spots for cell phone you know, coverage down there as well? And then we don't, uh, we have a couple minutes, so I see Brandy and Robert have comments as well. Um, I don't know if that means I'm up or not. Go ahead, Brandy. Yeah. Um, so um, similar to Lyle, I don't want to be a vigilante, but one of the things that I really try to encourage a lot of people to do is volunteer. That's one way that the community can get more involved. And I think as they volunteer and um, be participatory in some part of the observation or 
uh, management, uh, data collection, something, they get a little bit more ownership of it and a better understanding. That could be reef check diving, that could be participating in the urchin removals, that can be participating in any of the CDFW uh, data collection opportunities where there is volunteerism, other small groups that are doing other monitoring out on the, the North Coast. But I think just getting involved and volunteering, and I don't know how we would get that word out for those specific things, but um, I'm a big, you know, California fisheries research, uh, they're always looking for people to go out and fish with them. Um, and that's data collection in and outside the MPAs. So anyway, volunteering. That's a great point, Brandy. And um, Ken has been uh, chatting trying to get in the queue. Uh, Ken, why don't you go ahead and, and go, and then uh, Robert after that. Okay. Actually, it's, it's Sandra. Oh, and that's, I, and that's, that's fine, that's fine. No, no I get it, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Um, uh, I, I just want a, a couple of comments. Uh, Lyle was talking about, you know, approaching people when they're, and, and, there are several of us that do that and then have stepped away from it quite a bit because um, people can get pretty angry. I mean, even with, you know, hi, do you, do you need a bag? Because they're not picking up after their dog or gee, do you know, you know you're not supposed to be fishing here. Um, um, people can get pretty irate. Uh, so uh, I'm, sorry. I'm not sure what the answer is about uh, what to do about that other than again, education and maybe I don't know. Um, I hate to just say more and more signs, but but there could be more signs in strategic places that I think um, might help in some of those regards. We also don't have we don't have uh, things provided at, at, at Big River. We don't have you know the bags and the trash cans and any of that. So uh, people are less willing to um, take it with them. I mean, the same, we approach people about trash as well. And so um, anyway, that's just, uh, that's just a comment about, you know, trying to police it ourselves. Um, so that's all I wanted to put in. I don't know what the answer is. Thank you, everyone.